In this video clip, we're going to look at agile project management, and we're going to compare it directly with traditional project management. In traditional project management, a project might be broken down into phases separated by key milestones. Uh, these phases might be of, of different lengths. They might be irregular. You might have a long phase, a short phase, and a longer phase. The phase could be three months, two months, one month, but they're separated by important events where the management approve the progress of the project to the next step. Agile project management says, let's have equal durations for the phases. Let's set these phases at two weeks or one month and let's have review of progress on a regular basis. Just by doing this, we're clearly saying we want to see regular progress at key events. It's not just a sign off by the management at the milestone. It is a demonstration or a showcase of what has been achieved. Uh, incidentally, Agile comes out of the software project management world. And so therefore, a demonstration of working software in a showcase is a very logical thing to do. This is some of the terminology that you might hear if you work in an organization that's using agile project management. And we'll describe some of these terms. Sprints, scrums, uh, showcasing. Um, a burn down chart and planning poker are two techniques we will look at. Uh, daily stand up meetings, user stories, user retrospectives or epics. Now, for more information on Agile project management, go to uh, agilemanifesto.org. But essentially, this is what the Agile Manifesto is, that there are better ways of developing software and helping people develop software, that individuals and the interactions between people are more important over processes and tools. I've said in a previous lecture that it's people that deliver projects and that, that tools and plans will help. That working software is far more important than documentation. So showing a bit of working software is better than having a 100-page user requirement document. That collaborating with your customer is much more value-added than sitting down and thrashing around a contract negotiation-type meeting. So collaboration rather than negotiation. Don't follow a plan for the sake of it, but welcome change, because if the customer is wanting change, it's for a business reason. So let's welcome that change, let's accept it, rather than go through a change management process. Agile is saying that although the things on the right are important, we value the things on the left more. Agile has published a 12 principle manifesto. So let's just read through these. The highest priority is uh, satisfying the customer with continuous delivery of software. So we're going to use those showcases to deliver working software. That we welcome changes from the customer because he wants them for a good reason. And so even late in the development, we're not going to say, hey, that wasn't in the user requirements, that wasn't in the spec. You're going to have to raise a change order. You're going to have to raise a new purchase order. This is going to increase our budget. We welcome changes. Delivery of working software frequently, with a preference to doing that on a weekly or a monthly basis. That business people will work with the software developers that will work together as a team. We've talked about team working on projects. That we will build the project around motivated individuals. I've suggested that motivated individuals are involved in the planning process. We're going to make sure those individuals have the support, the training, the environment, the facilities, the resources they need to do their job. The most efficient way to convey information is face-to-face. -face. That's not new. We've already suggested that face-to-face -face communication is more efficient, but it's one of the Agile 12 principles. Working software is the measure of success. How you, how you measure it, lines of code or functionality, but working software is the key measure of success. 
sustainable development, uh, we don't mean the green environmental type sustainable here, we're saying we're not going to rush and work ourselves silly in the first month, we're going to work at a pace that's maintainable, that we will keep doing week after week after week. So we're going to pace ourselves and we're going to have a constant pace indefinitely. We're going to have continuous attention to the technical excellence and that's going to enhance our agility, our ability to be nimble, our ability to change. Principle 10, very useful one for students here. Simplicity. Maximise the amount of work you do not have to do. Maximise the amount of work you do not have to do. So only do what is really essential. Principle 11 suggests that the best designs, the best system architectures, come from self-organising teams. So all of the stuff we did on leadership and groups and teams and forming, storming, norming and performing, it has a place in Agile. And the team must reflect on what it's learnt and change its behaviour and learn how to become more effective. So all the stuff we did on project reviews is still important. So in Agile, the phases might be a week long, two weeks long perhaps, and we're going to have meetings with the customer to showcase what we've developed at regular periods. And instead of saying to people, you're doing this, you're doing that, you've got to do the other, what we're saying in Agile is, what can you achieve before the next showcase meeting? The customer is coming back next Friday morning, what can you have done by then? What working software will be developed at that point? And then it's shown at that Friday meeting, and it's focused on the functionality that the customer required. And we're going to make sure we can maintain that pace as we go through each week. Then we sprint between these meetings, but sprint in a sustainable way. And we might hold daily meetings or a scrum. Now, those familiar with uh, rugby and the use of the word scrum, it appears that that is a, a chaotic uh, mall where everybody just piles in. Um, but Scrum um, really means that the team are working together, having daily meetings where they might all shout out the issues, but it makes the priorities for that coming day. It's uh, a typical round the boss's desk meeting, 8.15 every morning, where people have got into work, got their coffee, what are our priorities for the day? We're going to meet the customer again on Friday morning with a showcase. What is it we need to do? Sometimes these scrums are chaired by somebody called a scrum master. So agile project management is going to be suited to those things that are poorly defined. We don't really know how we're going to achieve it or what we need to achieve, but let's go and work on something for the next week and show the customer and see what he thinks about it. So the poor definition of requirements uh, does apply to software projects. We have to show clear deliverables at these showcase events because the stakeholders are going to come and they want to see working software. We're then going to rapidly move from meeting to meeting producing more and more functionality and iterating and adapting that software as the customer reports at the showcase. So here's an example. Uh, we may have a pre-production design sprint where we mock up some designs, we have a showcase, and then we might split it into an alpha sprint, a beta sprint, and a final sprint. And each of those showcase events, those milestones, those dividers between the phases, the customer is giving feedback and comments. If you read some of the project management books, they'll talk about agile project management, so Wysocki includes it. And he's suggesting that uh, agile is either iterative or adaptive. And sometimes you come across the terms adaptive software development, ASD, dynamic system development method, the scrum, or rationalized unified process. Different, different terms for agile project management. Here's a, an agile tool uh, that's going to help us on estimating durations. It's based on the fact that if, uh, if the item is small, then people will estimate a small range. 
So for instance, how much is a pack of playing cards? People might estimate between a pound and three pounds. How much is a pint of lager? People might estimate between two pounds and four pounds, depending on where, you, where you're going. So a small item has a small range. But when you're asking them to estimate something larger that's more unknown, it's likely to have a large range. So let's get people to estimate how much it, how much it costs to go and buy Monopoly from the shops, and the estimates could be between 13 and 34 pounds, quite a large range. How much is a keg of beer? It's going to generate a large range as people think, well, perhaps it's going to be cheap because I'm buying it in bulk, or maybe it's expensive because I've got to buy this keg to, to hold all of the beer. What people do is they're allocated uh, a Finibachi number. And the Finibachi numbers, uh, the two numbers add up to the third number. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8, 13. You ask people how complex they think a situation is, or how much do they think it's cost, or how long it's going to take, and they vote by choosing one of these numbers. You then simply ask people, the smallest number, why do you think it's so easy? You ask the person with the largest number, why do you think it's so complicated? And you have a bit of discussion about that, and then you ask people to vote again. And you keep going through this process as people understand the task, uh, the duration or the cost. They're, they're gaining new information about why somebody thinks it's cheap or easy or short. You're gaining information about why the other person thinks it's difficult or long or hard. And you continue this process until everybody agrees. A second agile tool is the burn down chart. And this is just a uh, a graph that shows how many tasks we wanted to complete and over the life of the project, how many we've actually completed. And we burn down towards that target. So agile project management. Uh, it's got a lot of support in the uh, textbooks, more support than critical chain project management, perhaps. It's very suitable when you don't know the durations or you don't know how you're going to achieve something. And this applies to software and IT type projects. And it's got some tools that allow people to quantify what they might be able to achieve in a fixed period of time. So rather than the developer dif disappearing for three months and then they arrive back with something that actually the customers change their mind what they want, we have regular showcases at one or two week periods. And we ask people, what can you develop for the next showcase. And we can ask the customer what's important to them. Disadvantages, it's a whole set of new language, a whole set of new terminology for project management that people might not be familiar with. It requires a culture change in the organization. You have to sort of cascade out agile project management, what is project management, because you are going to use terminology that's different you're not going to ask for dates. You're going to ask for what functionality is required. So that's agile project management.